substance. <laughs> what? what was that? You get to say hi. Okay, we better start the podcast, okay? At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. So he's not moving. So he's going to join the podcast today, but we're going to put the love on the side. I'm sky. totally fine with that. Okay. Hi, Mr. Chu. <laughs> Say hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we have two amazing guests. We have <laughs> Mr. Chu with his little love bandana and welcoming back Annalise Cherie. And she's been on a few different podcasts with us. We've also done a few uh, Liberate Universities. So if you love this talk, I highly recommend you look at some of that other content that's up on YouTube or uh, in our podcasts and stuff like that. But Annalise is one of my dearest friends and she's also just this extraordinary human that continues to challenge yourself and gross um, in learning different tools, techniques, disciplines to better serve her clients. Uh, she you know, is a coach and a healer, um, but so much more than that. And it's uh, lots of transformational work happens with this one. And thanks. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Um, yeah, so I, I guess let's so, jump into it. <laughs> yeah, so the topic today, and for those that have watched, know that sometimes we deviate from our topic, but <laughs> it's perception is projection and really looking at that and understanding what that means and how that applies to your life. So mm -hmm. why don't you start, Annalise? Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, I do what's called alignment coaching and healing, where basically I go into people's emotional bodies and help uh, just kind of decipher, if you will, um, how they are storing their memories, their emotional experiences. Um, is there a congruency between their thoughts, their actions, their words and their emotional state. Um, so what I offer to people is just an alignment, like aligning all of those mm -hmm. aspects together. Um, why we chose the subject, uh, perception is projection, because of all of the years that I've been doing this, all the different modalities that I have moved through, um, the one foundational thing that has proven to be fact across the board is we do not see the world as it is, we see the world as we are. And perception within itself, you know, I, I tell my clients all the time, the most beneficial and powerful thing that you can do for yourself is step out of your model of the world without judgment, without rigidity or absolutism, mm -hmm. and allow yourself to be mobile in your perspectives. It just allows you so much more fluidity, so much more freedom in life, uh, you name it, it's endless. So. Um, we chose the subject because I basically now just really help people, I always use the phrase perspective expansion, um, I help people get out of their limiting beliefs, I help people break out of their limiting emotions, um, and really offer new insight and ways into how they can perceive and experience their reality. You know, it's so interesting how we just accept life. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't build life often, we accept life. And I think that that is a fundamental thing that really we have to start taking accountability for and really ask ourselves, am I happy with the experiences I'm having? Am I happy with the belief systems that I feel limited by or empowered by, whatever it might be, yeah. right? So um, yeah. Any questions around that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it's there's there's so much on that. You know that the fact of that people accept life, right? Mm -hmm. But not only I think that people accept it, they 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 don't even question, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because whatever that perception is that they're wearing, oftentimes then they only seek to validate that perception. And yeah. the moment that they run across a perception that might make them challenge that, mm -hmm. that that perception and this perception can exist in the same reality because they're different from one another or mm -hmm. whatever that may mean, mm -hmm. 
um, people create hate and animosity and um, or decide that they don't like that person or that area or that whatever that might be instead of yeah. diving in and seeing what they can grow from. Mm-hmm. So I like that idea of, of growth. But what do you think is the factor of the motivation behind why people seem to be so stuck in their current perception and that they don't seek to want to build their life? There's a few things to it, a few subcategories. The first one is um, people's when people's realities get threatened, right? And they get threatened by variable perspectives. So somebody comes in and it's like, I don't see the world. I'm not existing in that model of the world. This mm-hmm. is how I see it. Um, if you're not very secure and confident in what you believe, um, and when what does it mean to be secure and confident in what you believe? Because that's important to understand. Yeah, let's does, us, yeah, yeah don't tell us. It doesn't mean that you're right. It doesn't mean that your perspective is right or wrong. It yeah. just means that you are actively deciding that this is how I want to experience my reality. These are the things that I want in it. And it is okay, completely okay, if that does not fit into someone else's model of the world. I often say like one person's um, blessings is another person's demise. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just understanding like, what do I need? What's right for me? How do I want to experience my reality? And that doesn't make me right or wrong. That doesn't make me better or worse. This is just what I am consciously deciding and choosing for myself. So, and I see. That, so yeah. you're you're really explaining a lot of self empowerment. Of this is this is my choice. These are you know even if it's like it's like this ownership mentality of everything, yeah. Yeah. which is a balancing act because you the thing that comes in with that that's really important is intention, right? Mm-hmm. Because there are people who move through life that's like, I don't care, I'm gonna do what I want. Like, this is how I see it. I have no consideration for anyone else. This is my life, right? Mm -hmm. And that can actually create a lot of harm towards themselves and other people. So in order to really be empowered and and in uh, harmony, I should say, with the reality that you're constructing and building, you have to first really review and ask yourself, why am I choosing the realities that I'm choosing? You know, what is the emotional need behind these beliefs. Yeah. What is the um, intention that I want these things to bring me or other people? So that's why intention is really important in self-discovery or self-motivation. Like what am I intending to create out of these perceptions, out of these experiences? Because it's important to understand your thoughts, your perception, your words, they are not just thoughts. They're frequencies. Your thoughts are a vibrational frequency that almost work as a plug. They plug you into different realities, different experiences, different emotional states. And when you start to understand that, you have to really stop and ask yourself, like, do you know, do I like the way that this thought process is making me feel? Do I like the things that it's attracting into my life? Is there a way that I can shift it? And Again, in order to be, you use the word empowered, but I, I, t- I tend to say, that is one way to explain it, but I would say um, just leading, leading your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just to be leading your life and, and moving with intention in that way. Um, it's really just about asking yourself like, okay, like, am I happy with the things I'm attracting? You know, do I, do I want these things? So I like that. And it's, it's, it's from that like aspect of, I think in other areas of life, it's easy for people to grab a hold of that concept of, I have control. I have the ability to change something, you know, Mm -hmm. like maybe some people say if, if I don't like the work that I'm in or the job that I am, I have the power to quit or to find a new job. Or, you know, if somebody can say, all right, if I'm fed up with my weight or my health, like I can make better dietary choices, I can make better physical choices, and I can shift that, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody here has a problem 
wrapping their mind around that. But I think that if you map that over to what you're saying, maybe mm-hmm. for those that are having a hard time grasping this invisible concept mm-hmm. of, of perception, right? Would you say that it kind of works the same way? Yeah, and it actually it speaks to the first question you asked. Um, so one thing is like people's realities feel threatened, but the other thing is, is a lot of people, you're, you're born into a reality you have parents or some sort of parental dynamic or influence no matter what that looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The first seven years of your life, you are taught realities. Doesn't mean they're correct. Doesn't mean that that's how it is. You're just taught realities. Mm -hmm. And as you get older, you're now kind, you have a, a baseline, foundational baseline of like, this is how I experience and perceive the world. This is my foundational truth. And as you get older, oftentimes people don't, even understand that there can be realities outside of what they know because that is how it's always been. Mm -hmm. And so a big issue that um, people run into, and of course I have in my own life, I'm sure you have at variable times in your life, is you don't even challenge the reality that you're in. You just accept the reality that you're in and say, this is just how life is. This is just how it is. And this is how my income is, this is how relationships yeah. show up, these are how friendships sell, right. uh, this is how my health is, this is how my energy level is, whatever that might may yep. be. And we just accept life on life's terms. Mm-hmm. When in actuality, um, typically when things arise like conflicts or whatever, it's not because life is hard or punishing us, but it is a reflection, um, a kind of a stopping point, if you will, if you allow yourself to to be the student. I always tell my clients, like, literally we're here, like, Earth is a school. (laughs) We're here to learn, we're here to grow, we're here to cultivate and understand deeper levels of love. And the most important thing is just become a student to life. Yeah. What is the lesson? What is the lesson? Is there an opportunity for me to uh, grow and expand within this space? And um, as it relates to perception, it's like, you kind of have to stop and realize there is no such thing as a fixed reality. We live in trillions of different models of the world, which is why we're seeing so much conflict and so much aggression, so much anger, because one person is like, how can you not see this? Like, this is how it is. And then another person's like, how could you not see this? And it's like, this is how it is. And it's yeah. just, it's, it goes back to that cup analogy from like, I don't know, I learned that a long time ago. I'm looking at this side. Annalise is looking at that side. What are you seeing? Mm-hmm. I see a sun. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't see a sun. I see this white thing with freckles and a mm-hmm. brown line and green. Right. And, you know, because one side has this and one side's that. Mm-hmm. And they're both true, but they're just one aspect of it. And if, yeah. if, you're, if you're only describing or you're only seeing, which I think that that's what you were saying before, is mm-hmm. some people choose to just accept, but they also don't even go into challenge. They don't even go yeah. to explore. Like, well, so they don't many, know how. I mean, they don't even know that that's an option. It's not even like a thought process. You yeah, know? it doesn't yeah. even occur in the reality. <laughs> I, like this, this, this was yeah. years ago and it might have ex- expanded since, but now it's probably contracted a lot. But I remember when I was working on a travel company that I had, I found out that the staggering statistic was less than 5% of Americans had ever went to a different country. Wow. What? <laughs> like less than 5% of Americans have ever traveled abroad. Like, like the, the again, I'm not sure if that's still the statistic. So this was like a decade ago, you know, but I'm just saying like, it can't be too much more than that. Mm-hmm. And think about a lot of people don't even leave their hometown they don't go and live in a different city the in a long go and explore a different country um and you know in la you see a lot of people that are transient you know you see most of la uh, it's rare to almost find an LA native. You find people from all over different cities and different countries and stuff like that, but that's not the case if you go anywhere else in America. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay, maybe in New York, maybe in LA, maybe, maybe kind of Chicago, but not even really. I don't think yeah. that that's that much of a hub, but hey, and it's like, if that is something to look at through that lens of people just live through their own bubble, 
right? Mm -hmm. And many people continue to surround themselves with the the norms that they've always known their whole life, Mm -hmm. then how would they even know that there's another reality or another way that life can be, operate, feel, experience? Yeah, and you know, it is what it is. Like no, no but, yeah. know, but I mean, for those that are listening, you're clearly yeah. like you're curious. You're so invested like, in, in making it an expansion. Yeah, or you wouldn't be here. So, yeah, and if you yeah. stumble upon this or you share it with somebody, mm-hmm. like the biggest point is that it can happen, right? Yeah. Per, you know, like I think that if you understand what Annalise is saying, and mm-hmm. for you to elaborate more about that power of perception. Yeah. Well, so let me give you some tools. Yeah. That, like literally you can just start examining and reviewing in your own life and see how this starts to modulate things for you. And again, like when I work with clients more individually, I would say most of the time a lot of people just aren't aware of their blind sides and their limitations. And you know, that, yeah, most people. Yeah, that's where like the energy work aspects of things are very helpful in identifying where there might not be alignment between action, thought and emotions. Um, but here's something that you can just do on your own <laughs> without any energy work or support. And, and of course, like it's always nice to then like work with someone to help facilitate and go deeper into those processes. But um, the world is realities. Doesn't matter what reality you want to talk about. Any reality is created in dichotomy. This is explained in a lot of different ways in a lot of different cultures. Um, the most common one that, that people know about is the yin and yang symbol, right? Mm-hmm. So there's the light and the darkness with the little bit of darkness and light, right? Yeah. So it's like you, there's the shadow side, but in order to fully exist in the shadow side, there has to be a small baseline awareness of the light. Just like on the opposite, there's the light side, but in order to fully understand and comprehend it, there has to be a small awareness of the shadow, okay? Mm-hmm. So that's what the yin and yang represents, if you didn't know. Um, in a little bit more modernized explanation, dichotomy, okay? For example, in order for us to conceptualize and understand heat, the opposing force of that is to have cult, right? So that's a dichotomy. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's what helps us understand and di- differentiate one reality from another. So in life, we have uh, foundational belief systems, if you will, okay? okay? And on one side, whatever reality it is that we're creating, there's always going to be an opposing reality, whether we're conscious of it or not. Most of the time we're not conscious of it and we exist in the shadow side of it. Um, But you can shift your baseline. So what I would ask for you guys to do today and just consider into your own life, and I'll use an example here that's used with most people because it's really just clear about what I'm talking about baselines and dichotomy. So a foundational baseline is you can live in a reality, we'll use lack mentality because it's a big one, especially right now. So we'll use a lack mentality on one side of the dichotomy, there's, um, I'm really poor, okay? Mm-hmm. On the other side of that dichotomy is getting by. So this is a foundation, okay? But let's say you realize like, wait a second, why am I oscillating between really poor and getting by? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, why is that? I don't wanna exist in that baseline or that dichotomy, so can I change the baseline? Okay, well, how about I elevate that to the next phase of getting by to doing well? So yeah. now we're changing the foundational reality of like, no, I'm shifting it up. I'm shifting it up a few notches, and you can take that even further. Okay, what if I'm doing well to really amazing? And you can take it even further, and you can keep going and going. So these are baselines. I would ask you to look at your own life and start identifying what are things that you feel a little bit limited by that you're like, I'm, oh, I can't do this anymore, and you know, why am I in this space? Mm-hmm. Now, what's really cool? So once you identify. Um, these foundational baselines, you can then really look at the dichotomy of it basically and ask yourself, whatever reality I'm existing in is going to create an opposing reality. Mm -hmm. Where do I want to exist with that? What do I want to be experiencing? I have applied this to my own life, especially in the last like four months. I've been sitting down and asking myself, okay, you know, what are some things that aren't feeling I'm not feeling empowered with in my own life and how do I experience those things like yeah. what are my what are my baselines that I'm existing between do I like that 
Does that feel good? Most of the time I'm like, what the heck, Annalise? Like, why are you doing that to yourself? And I literally make it a discipline to sit down and be like, that's not anything I want to be experiencing. Yeah. So I'm just going to consciously decide that I can have this foundation to exist between instead. Is that clear? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think yeah. so. It's, a, it's identifying where you were at, mm-hmm. right? And saying, I'm here and I oscillate between here and here. Mm-hmm. And what if I can open up to the possibility mm-hmm. that I could zi- exist somewhere else? Yep. And what, where, how would that look and how would that feel? And I like the fact that you take it one step at a time, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not like you go from being really poor to being really amazing because the brain, there's so much of a big gap between that that mm-hmm. you might not be able to comprehend. It doesn't mean that you can't get there, but if you go from making, saying, okay, like, I'm, I make $50,000 a year and I'm gonna make a million dollars a year, your brain doesn't even know, like, that's such a disparity. It doesn't mean that in a few years or even what, whenever you hit that, that you couldn't, mm-hmm. and you could get there a lot faster. And yes, it's possible, mm-hmm. but if you said, okay, 50,000 to 100,000, could I imagine what that would change in my life? It's a little gap. Yep. It's a double gap. You know, and not a 10 time fold gap. Yeah. And that's like also the application of identifying your foundational belief systems because, you know, I I always tell people, I think that there's this misconception that like gratitude and positivity and happiness is like somehow just a natural state. It's not. You have to understand that just as we can conceptualize that the physical body can be really strong and muscular or toned and healthy, you can have that understanding, but unless you show up for it and you create a discipline and eat correctly or exercise or find movement to some level, you're not going to optimize the physical body to like literally optimize it in real time like you would even though you can conceptualize it, right? It's the same thing with the mind. Like you, we all have concept and understanding that you can be happy and feel grateful and have positivity and all these things. But if you're not actively creating some sort of a discipline of like, this is what I want to feel, experience and think is my daily reality and really sitting down and deciphering just like you would with food, right? Like yeah. maybe I shouldn't be eating that or drinking that because those actions are not aligning with the um, outcomes, the optimization of my physical body that I want to experience. It's oh the, man, yeah. I mean. <laughs> it's the same thing with the mind. It's like... It's so true. Yeah, these friendships or these conversations, not to blame anyone else. You gotta take full ownership of everything around you. But it's like these conversations I'm engaging in, these movies I'm watching, this stuff I'm listening to, all of it contributes to my mental state, all of it. Yeah. And, you know, are those things really serving what you truly intend for yourself? Um, are you looking for optimi- optimization? So you can apply this dichotomy uh, process basically to your life and just like Christina said, like take it in increments, create realistic goals for yourself. Like, you know, it's it's unrealistic and, and I tell people all the time, you know, I've been meditating for like literally every day for nearly five years. When I started, it was not like, huh, like I'm floating to the heavens. It was like, damn it. <laughs> like, yeah. has it been 10 minutes yet? Like it's just feeling like it's taking forever and it was, me just saying, you know what, I can look around me and I can see that there are people who have stayed consistent to something, that their lives are impacted by it. So that tells me that it's possible. I choose to believe in that possibility. Mm -hmm. I choose to allow that reality into my life. I'm going to keep showing up for it. And then eventually it shows up, shows up because you've applied belief to it. Yeah. And I would even like take that as like having people have like the aha, like while you were talking, it's like your reality now is due to the discipline, whether you view it as a discipline or not, but it's Mm -hmm. the discipline of your actions today. Yes. You know, so if you say, oh, you know, like you're working hard at being unhappy or you're working hard at being 
unhealthy or you're working hard at having toxic relationships mm -hmm. because you're literally investing time, energy, and um, uh, in, in activity, right? Yeah. Into those realms. So I think that if people get that, right? Mm -hmm. It takes effort to, you know, choose bad food it takes a you're you're picking it you're grabbing it you're doing it, it to sit on the couch mm -hmm. to watch this to do this whatever the case is in that pattern to engage in those toxic conversations to engage in whatever you're actively being a participant in that mm -hmm. and the only reason that it feels like it's difficult to shift is just because you're shifting a pattern Yes. Right. But I think that there's a lot of people that like, you know, some people have advantages due to that programming that happened that you were mentioning up until mm -hmm. seven, that if they grow up in a family that like goes to the farmer's market every day or like once a week or twice a week and cooks organic food and, t t and like they don't eat bad ever. They, they now don't even have to think about it, just health, you know, or if they're always like going for runs with their parents or going for hikes or yeah. so. Like, like the kids that grow up in that environment are just like activity and, and good food is just mm -hmm. a norm. Where somebody else might grow up in a different environment where it's a little bit more challenging, but we all have challenges. Mm -hmm. They're just different. And you actually just used an example, which I loved, but it triggered a thought that I do want to address as well. It's also very important for mental health and for empowerment of self to really get to a place where you eradicate the notion of right and wrong and good and bad. Oh, yeah, that I mean, yeah. but because like, honestly, um, so I was vegan for like five years and well, a little bit less, like four, four years, basically. Um, and in the last year, I started to eat stuff or eat some meat again. Like I'm, I'm mindful of that process for sure, just for my own model mm -hmm. of the world and how I experience things. Um, but I came to understand over the years, and this is just important, whoever needs to hear this, okay? Yeah. It is not so much about what we do in life, but the belief and energy that we put into what we are doing that matters above all, okay? So again, it's not that there is like a perfect right model of living the world like to be woke and spiritual like you have to eat a certain way you have to believe certain things you have to create certain disciplines there are guidelines and there are structures that are have proven to be helpful and beneficial to individuals empowerment but i am telling you with absolute certainty it is not about following a blueprint that does not feel natural to you you the yeah. true sense of empowerment and um management of the mind is learning how to literally love and accept yourself exactly as you are, who you are, and from that space, you're gonna know what is not serving you and what is, and what you're, you have the acknowledgement and intuition and instinct within you that's gonna be like, you know what? I don't think I wanna eat that anymore. Yeah. But it's coming from you. It's not coming from a space of, if I do this, then I am a better person. If I do this, then I'm on the right path you really want to wait for that permission from yourself because it, it, it really is, all of this work should be about where you, you want to go. Coming, yeah, you coming into balance with who you really are. Not feeling like you have to be something. You know what I mean? And I think like even taking it a step further is that, you know, if we get to that kind of even deeper level of like, there is no right and wrong, right? Mm -hmm. There is no good or bad. Uh, we're given a spectrum of emotions in different states that all have the ability to teach us things at different times. And also the, just like there's seasons for everything, I, you know, there's times for everything in your life. And I think that we live in a society that idolizes like this iconic happiness and says that that's the right model or the right way to live. And of course, like for those that are listening, of course, why, why wouldn't you want to experience more happiness? That's what you enjoy. That's what you were, uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's on every dollar bill in, in the United States. But there's also an amazing time to grieve, an amazing time to allow yourself to feel all of these different emotions and sometimes yeah. some of the most magical masterpieces come out of that Absolutely. right you know for your own like 
some like they say like in the like the spiritual community like you have to face a dark night of your soul and then you have this like kind of other but you have to face the dark night of soul so you have to be in your down and out in order to have that awareness right yeah or you know a lot of the music and the different things and the heartbreaks or the different stuff and, and again it's not like we're wishing it upon anybody but those experiences have value to us yeah well, it kind of comes full circle to the um, perception is projection. Where attention goes, energy flows. And a there's a fine line between acknowledging shadow aspects of self and being like, okay, that could use a little bit of work and not getting over focused and obsessed on it. Like, oh, yeah, of course, like shifting yeah. into the solution oriented reality. Like, okay, acknowledge that I have these tendencies or these traits. What are the solutions? And putting your energy and focus towards that because where your attention goes, energy flows. You will magnify whatever it is you are believing consciously or unconsciously about yourself, the world. You'll attract all of that around you. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just important to understand, like, y you're, you know, believe it or not, <laughs> your healing really is in, in getting to a point where you're like, you know what? I love myself who I, as who I am. Mm -hmm. I love myself as who I am. And of course there's room to grow. And yeah. of course I'm not perfect. Like when I was living in Peru, um, you know, I went out there for my own healing, which changed my life. I met Christina just literally right after that experience, like maybe even a week after. And um, I remember I was really fighting myself. I had so much judgment on myself to a degree I didn't even understand. Mm. And like to, the, to a degree I didn't even see, right? And I remember being in like isolation and going through a process and, and the shaman coming in and talking to me and he just looked at me and he goes, Annalise, in life, you can only reach your fullest potential and the magic and beauty and wonderment of what you are by allowing yourself to go into the deepest darkness depths of what exists within you. Woohoo! As above, so, so below. And until you are willing to see the shadow that exists within you, because it exists within everyone, it truly does, you will never be able to understand the magic and beauty of what you are. It comes back to dichotomies. Yeah. Okay? So it's like, if you can see, and maybe you're experiencing that right now, maybe that's your reality where you're like, man, everything feels really dark around me and mm -hmm. I don't know what to do about it, you know? Well, let me give you an invitation to, instead of hate it or fight it or loathe it or be like, oh my God, I need to change this. What if you welcomed it and partnered it and celebrated it because it's showing you, well, if I'm here, then that means I can go here. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? You can experience the opposite and it's almost yeah. like you in feeling like that's your right and you deserve to experience the opposite. Exactly. And maybe it's not always easy to see our light, right? Yeah. Um, so maybe you can take this tool back into your life and something you're struggling through right now, write down the dichotomy. Well, if I'm feeling this right now, whether it be, who knows, it could be about anything, what's the opposite? Mm -hmm. And see if you can cultivate, make that your intention. I intend to feel this way. Because if I'm feeling this way, then the, the opposing energy exists within me. I just have to choose it. I have to see it. I have to allow myself to be aware of it. Yeah. Right? That's been stretched and the opposite automatically has to exist. Exactly. It's the laws of nature. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's a, it's a really amazing thing. And, um, you know, yeah, life is, it's not about anything other than accepting, accepting who you are. Yeah, and realizing yeah. there's always different ways to see things. But then if you like get into that and like you, you said before about the game, right? And playing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if, if, you're, if you're playing this game of life or your perception or however you worded it with it before, but you know, that opens up this level of curiosity. 
mm-hmm. and says, well, what else is there to explore? What else is there to grow? If I can learn this much, well, what else, you know? And that magic, I think like the, they, 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 there's been this saying that everybody, I think on this, you know, at least America, but has heard before, uh, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know mm-hmm. <laughs> because the curiosity expands and you realize that there's so much more to expand. Mm-hmm. And then that makes life feel magical. Yeah. But like, yeah. it, it's like... <laughs> there's, you know, there's this um, a really amazing song and a line from it is, uh, magic is real if that's how you feel. Oh, right? I like that. And it's so true because, in the, and I just went to this amazing workshop in Hawaii, learning some incredible things with some of the world's best psychologists and the last living kumus, and it was just like amazing, um, which maybe we'll talk about. But regardless, um, the one thing that I have kind of always foundationally known, like through the years of my own practice and working with just my gosh, a wide variety and range of individuals. And what they really focused on in this school was you have to be willing to apply apply belief to something for it to truly reveal itself to you. Mm. If you aren't, if you go into something with rigidity and the intention to disprove it, you will. Yeah. Because you're that powerful. (laughs) But if you go into something and say, you know what? I choose to apply the belief that this process can help me, that this experience will bring me clarity and uh, resolution, then you are applying your belief to these things. And that is so important. Why? Because you are deciding. There's There's nothing around you. And that's where I say with these tools, honestly, like, we're just plugging into different realities. <laughs> like, yeah. There is no such thing as truth, and there is no such thing as a fixed reality. It is the only thing that I think foundationally we can conceptualize and understand from the beginning of time that shows across every single belief system, science included, is that there exists a source of energy, that there are negative and positive charges to things, <laughs> and that there is likely a greater force around us okay so more or less however you want to believe that (laughs) internalize it whatever your belief system is totally cool because there is no right or wrong it's just understanding that the the true power in life and the true true leadership of self and accountability of self is realizing that it's the the belief that you give to things it's the it's the um, application of what you choose to bring to different tools and different things in life that will will shape and build things. Yeah, and yeah. and make your and project like mm-hmm. the topic of what your experience is too. Hundred percent. You know, yeah. I mean, even if it's something like not as spiritually growth wise, if if you are looking forward to an event and you are going there with an openness and an excitement you're probably going to find that magic excitement and fulfillment from it. But if you're feeling like you have to go when you don't want to go and you rather spend the night watching Netflix or whatever the case may be, you're going to go there and you're probably going to have a crappy time and it's going to validate that you probably should have just stayed home, Mm -hmm. right? And it's like everything is there and I think anybody has had that experience at least one time to Mm -hmm. grasp this beautiful concept that you're sharing is you've wanted to go someplace and you've found magic in it or an amazing oppor- or amazing experience or you haven't wanted to go and then you validated and felt like you should just listen to yourself next time. Mm-hmm. It, it, you're just going to continue to fulfill your prophecy of your own self. Until- yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I mean, and that, that's another term that explains that same thing is patterns. Yeah. You know, it's it's just are we stuck in a box of you know, limiting belief or rigid, rigidity or absolutism that is preventing you from opening it up and being like, look what's up here. There's so much. There's yeah. so many ways to experience reality. And I think that that's, you know, ultimately that's fundamentally one of the hardest and greatest places to get to in life is most people will start to do this work. Most people, 
And I can say it because it, I used to be that person, okay? Um, exists in some format of the, the term I use is the villain and the victim mentality, mm-hmm. okay? Where it's like you've either done something wrong to someone or someone's done something wrong to you. And there's just this association yeah. of vilification or victimization, okay? And on the other side of that, if you can eradicate the villain and victim narrative out of your story, you are now in a position of like leadership and building and complete mm. control in a way because nobody can ever take anything from you and nobody can ever do anything to you at that point because you're now in a position where you take full ownership for the things that are happening and moving around you. Even if people do hurtful things, which happens, of course, people do hurtful things. I think though, and don't quote me on the statistics of this, I do believe it's like less than 2% of people actually do things with ill intent, right? Mm-hmm. Like nobody's like, ha ha ha, like maniacal, like I'm gonna kill you, you know, like Yeah, I mean, happens. there are a couple people yeah. that, you know, like. <laughs> it happens, like so about 2% of the population do have that intent of like, I'm gonna hurt you and harm you and take you down. But in all actuality, less than 2% of people really do things with the intent to harm it's just their baggage it's their models of the world that make them feel threatened or insecure or hurt or whatever that causes all kinds of erratic behavior you know which their baggage and their unresolved pain becomes other people's baggage and unresolved pain and that's why you know something again that you can start applying into your life is really sitting down and this is not easy it's not like just take responsibility it's very hard with certain things it is it's very hard to take ownership of certain things especially traumas that people go through because you know especially traumas that people go through at very young ages right Mm -hmm. and then you have to separate on some level and say okay you know the the child's not calling that in but if you're going to a higher level and you say well is there some lesson that the soul was trying to experience in this lifetime, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and, or is this an aspect or a situation that you can choose to powerfully grow and expand yourself from as a result of, instead of having it dehabilitate you and cause more destruction in your life? Because it's bad enough you go through pain once but that's that individual experience at one time. But most suffering comes from repeating that in your mind, not the physical event anymore, mm-hmm. the experience, but rather you're recalling and reliving and in, 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 in a way choosing to allow that one time hurt mm-hmm. to be X amount of time yeah. of, of hurt. Yeah, well, it's, and it happens as a trauma response, like when something, we feel like someone has taken something from us or done something, it becomes disempowering. And most, you know, very often we just don't know how to get it back. You know, that becomes our new model of the world and we relive it and we relive it. Um, You know, but you have to stop and ask yourself, like, do I want to keep giving that power in my life over to someone that already hurt me yeah or am i done i'm letting that happen and i wish to rewrite that narrative you enjoying this so far did you forget to subscribe make sure to do so takes two seconds just press that little button the red one you know the one just press it little like all right enjoy the rest of this content and you know and, and i always say that rewrite the narrative because You know, for me, I had some challenging experiences in my childhood. You know, somebody had harmed me and it did impact my relationships for most of my adult life until I had to face it and be like, you know, I I have to deal with this if I want different results and different experiences. Yeah. And how I overcame it was exactly what Christina is saying, is I looked at the situation and I was like, I could keep letting this experience claim my life. Mm -hmm. Or I could look at this experience because I have the power and the control. And this, by the way, is not being disingenuous or dishonest with yourself. 
it is you making a decision to shift out of one dichotomy, one side of the yeah. perspective to another. And for me, the true healing began when I was like, what if this is not a survivor story anymore, but a, a story of empowerment? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it really took me sitting down and being like, if I did call this experience into my life, if I did call this situation in, what was the lesson? What did I learn from it? What did I learn from it? And fundamentally, the biggest thing I learned was like, you get to decide how you want to experience your life. You get to decide how you want to internalize things. This situation literally was the beautiful foundation that brought you to this space, which brought you to this space, which the brought you to this space. And you would not be the person that you are doing the things that you do had this not been the catalyst to set that process off. Yeah. Now it's a domino effect, and right? So, which goes into complete utter self acceptance. Because if you can look in your in yourself in the mirror and mm -hmm. say, "I love myself. I accept myself. I'm happy and proud to mm -hmm. be me." Well, it's kind of like Groundhog's Day or butterfly effect. If you change one little thing, if you hit the snooze, I mean, I mean, this might outdate many people that are watching this as far as the movie, but love that movie. <laughs> the the the. the he keeps on reliving the same day over and over again and sometimes he'll hit the snooze one extra time and the course of events is completely different yeah right uh walking on the left side of the uh when he comes out of the house versus the right side the whole sequence of events becomes different and on some level you have to know that every aspect in your life is is the base for the next aspect of your life to the next aspect of your life and it's this building blocks and like you take one thing away and you wouldn't be who you are today now you could argue i might be better off but you could also be worse off but you if you love and accept you you mm -hmm. say i'm grateful right yeah, exactly it's the application to it it's the belief and application of this is something that took something from me the victim reality or this is something that you know, I took from someone else the villain mentality, or this is something that has created, it, this is an opportunity. This yeah. has created a platform and a path to lead to incredible lessons and growth and expansion within myself and life. Yeah, and even mm -hmm. if it led you down the dark night of the soul and those shadow aspects or whatnot, you know, because I know that sometimes the expression of trauma in somebody's life sometimes can lead them uh, down addiction platforms or other ways of, you know, the pain is so deep that there's this detachment from wanting to feel that happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but then oftentimes it's in that darkness that they're given that, okay, if I can feel like you're given the example, if I get this low, I can get this high. And it's having that realization yeah. that there's other perceptions, there's yeah. other perspectives that you can have. It's kind of like the way that it was explained to me when I began really studying this stuff and applying it to my own life is we spiral down or we spiral up. Mm, love it! So, you know, in truth, neither one is right or wrong. And you're going to get the lessons that you need and, and whatever growth that's necessary. And in truth, you're going to choose whatever you're going to choose. Yeah. And that's not right or wrong. And I cannot stress that enough but you do have the the power within you to understand the dichotomy and make the decision do i want to spiral down or do i want to spiral up how do i want to use this experience whatever yeah. you decide like you decide yeah like, and, and yeah and when you stop yourself and say like when you started talking in the beginning with the different levels of like this is where i am and i oscillate between these two and then i can do that as you say, okay, if everything's this like world that I get to live in and play in, you know, like, what am I playing? What's the game I'm playing? What's the reality that I'm experiencing? What do I want to experience? Mm -hmm. Because if we stop ourselves for a moment, I think is, is powerful. It's like, yeah, even on like the spiraling up or spiraling down and say, well, what else am I curious about experiencing? Just like mm -hmm. you, you might be like, Christina, I want to go and go to Madagascar mm -hmm. and travel into a crystal mine. And the more you think about, like, what else do you want to experience in life, you start to bring that into existence. Like, you yeah. wanted to get your scuba diving certification. You got that. Like, you bring these, like, 
what would this be like? But it's important to add to that because you're completely right. You know, it's identifying the, the desire but you have to also identify the why. Oh, of course, of course, yeah. yeah because if like, you're if you're like, I need to, you know, I'm going to just use a stereotypical example. Mm -hmm. I need to have this Lamborghini because that's going to make me feel powerful and complete and people are going to admire and think that I'm wealthy. Mm -hmm. Well, you're looking for ego validation, you know, like now, yeah. if that was your motive, but if underneath you're just like, I love this car and this represents, uh, I don't know, my that hard work, my, my hard work, my joy, my... This represents my, the value that I see myself as. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the, you know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with buying a Lamborghini. There, sure it's just, isn't. <laughs> what, it's just what is your motivation and... What is the intent? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so yeah mm -hmm. the intent and the why behind it. And when it comes from that heartfelt place mm -hmm. and that truth that is aligned with you mm -hmm. that's the power that is the power that's that's the flow state which i'm sure you've heard that term used before um she mentioned scuba diving i just got my diving license which was incredible there was a why behind that you know it's like i had the desire most of my life to i love the ocean um but recently i had to examine the why what was the intention of me getting my diving license it wasn't just because i was like because i can like which is fine but for me it was an expression of me giving myself permission to do the things that I want to do. Give myself permission and not wait for like the time to arrive for that to occur or whatever. It's about me opening up to life and, and saying, you know what, I want more. I'm ready mm -hmm. for more. I want to start honoring the things that I desire and love within my life and within myself. And that was the intent behind it. Yeah. And it was in such harmony and flow because of it. And it, you know, it's just like, that's the flow state. What is the intent behind what we're doing? You know, that's, yeah, that matters. And, and I think that that's the beautiful work of alignment, going back to what you do, alignment coaching, alignment healing, is you know, putting you in alignment with yourself so you can start to understand what it is that you desire and want and the reasons behind it mm -hmm. and the ability to shift your perspective and create a different projection of a reality that you want to experience yeah yeah because oftentimes with my clients i mean it's funny even today this before i came here this was something that came up where it's like, as I said earlier, where attention goes, energy flows. It's like the universe doesn't understand the concept of right or wrong. It just understands magnetism, like where you're giving your focus and energy to. Um, that's what's happening. Fearful. Yeah. From my session this morning, it was a similar thing that came up where it was like where attention goes, energy flows. Um, oftentimes, it's just really important to understand that if you're wanting something, but you're just putting all of this focus into what's not working and what you don't want, and you know, yeah, just what isn't working, the universe does not operate yeah. in these right or wrongs. It operates in focus. What are you applying your life force towards? And I will give you that. Because we live in a world that is abundant. <laughs> like it wants to give you, it wants to validate your beliefs constantly. It wants to support you in whatever you bring focus and life force energy towards. So, you know, oftentimes with the alignment coaching, it's it's people think that they've identified the changes that they want, and, and oftentimes they have. The disconnect, and which is what alignment coaching is great for, or alignment healing, the disconnect is that they're um, basically not applying focus towards the solution, they're applying focus to the problem. Which is, yeah. I think, yeah, most mm -hmm. people, right? Yeah. It's, we live in that, we've kind of, tr it's not necessarily, I don't think it's our uh, natural state, but I think we do live in a society that think of what's going wrong, think of what's going wrong, you know, like it's, I've, uh, there was one song that stuck with me like years ago that I heard, and it's, it's it, it goes, Everybody loves you when you're down. Everybody's there to support you with mm -hmm. like a frown or something. I don't know. I don't remember exactly the words, but I remember it stuck with me. And I was like, huh. And it was like this, and it kept on repeating. It was part of the chorus, you know? And and it was like, yeah, like 
so many people, if you have a bad day, if something goes wrong, if your relationship breaks up, everybody's there to support you, give you love, you know, this and that, where we live in this very weirdly competitive society that you get a win and you feel like the daver is going to your back. I mean, like, I just even experienced that recently. I finally, like, I, I, I bought my first home and, like, I could just feel I was sharing it with a friend and I felt like this jealousy daver is going on me and I was like, geez, you know, like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. but you could feel like, and, and oh, you, you you got lucky with that and this and that and that, blah, 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 and, and you could just hear the story. And I was like, huh, you know, but the there's this weird dynamic that a lot of people aren't trained or have this awareness to celebrate people's wins. Yeah. I mean, we don't live in a world <laughs> where, um, like, positivity is reinforced you know we don't live in a world where like self-empowerment is reinforced we live in a world where we're constantly being marketed and sold to of like you're not enough you need this to feel better like yes this, this, this. so i mean naturally we're all a little bit conditioned to we're kind of trained to have this mentality of like I need to get ahead. I need to constantly consume. I need to get be better, better, better. I mean, we, or, yeah. And then think yeah. about like what you were saying mm-hmm. that we're trained to think about the things that we don't have or the mm-hmm. things that aren't working in our life instead of like, you know, I mean, the same person could have been like, well, if you can do it, maybe I can do it too. And you know, like, mm-hmm. like or like, let's look at you know, like there's there's this level mm-hmm. of let's focus on what you want. And people's lives would shift, but there's so much training that people are going against, but that's why people sometimes need to work with a coach and they need to work with somebody to help support them to Mm -hmm. get them to that place where that becomes a natural process. Yeah, it's just, exactly, solution-oriented reality. Identify what you feel isn't working, but then you must immediately switch into the solution-oriented reality. What is the solution? Yeah, what is the solution? Oh, what what, yeah. what 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 do you want, you know? Mm-hmm. You've identified it, so let's not look at what you don't have, let's look at what you do yeah. want. Which fundamentally is actually the hardest thing in the world, I've noticed, for most people. I've, I've kind of categorized this, and I know that we're wrapping up. Yeah. Like, all of the years that I've been working with literally thousands of people of all walks of life, from Olympic athletes to your stay-at-home mom, right? Yeah. And what I've come to realize is I've kind of categorized it into three baselines where it's like people will come to me and they one like the beginning process of the work is just identifying the blind sides realizing that there are more things that can be seen than what they've just accepted life to be the second phase is undressing that right Mm -hmm. so really looking into the depths of what do I believe in challenging that and asking yourself if you're good with that or if you want something different, if you want a different dichotomy to exist in, which brings us to the third phase, which is literally the hardest phase for most people, which is now that I have an empty cup, what do I want? <laughs> like, yeah. What do I want to put in it? And that is fundamentally discernment is pretty much foundationally the biggest issue that most people are against or up against not against (laughs) like you know i would agree like most Mm -hmm. people don't even know what they would want Mm -hmm. and even if they say like what it is they want because they've been they just hold on to some kind of dream of like oh i want a family or i want to make this amount of money or this or whatever and then you ask them the why and they can't answer it yep right and so it I think because, I mean, I don't know, my, my analogy or my like thought process on that is we're, we're so conditioned to not really know ourselves that it's that people don't, they haven't spent much time asking those questions. They, they, they either want to like, they go through a system then they're taught that they need to get a job and contribute and oftentimes it's an influence of certain people in their life maybe their parents or certain teachers that guide Mm -hmm. them into a certain career Mm -hmm. because they think it will either give them stability security uh, financial freedom or you know whatever Mm -hmm. uh, acknowledgement and then they go after that yeah and then they're lost. Yeah, I mean, like that usually ends up in like a midlife crisis, and that is actually getting younger and younger. So it's more like becoming a quarter life crisis with how quickly things are moving in the world and how much exposure to other people's realities and all the variable differences we can have. But 
you know, ultimately to wrap this up, like, yeah, yeah the, the takeaway is I really would advise you to start looking at your life and asking yourself, like, what are the dichotomies uh, that exist within me and my perception and my reality? What are the foundations that exist within those dichotomies? And can I elevate them to something new? And just become clear on those things and apply it to your life. You yeah. know, as you go through the day, like, stop and ask yourself, is this me making a decision that matches what I intend? Yeah. Or is this me choosing the old narrative that I know is not working for me? And that's something you can do just on your own. You know, the, the, just start it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, if they want to work further with you, yeah. yeah. So how they, do they contact you? Yeah, so you can uh, go to my website, AnnaliseMindset.com, and we'll put all of that in the bottom. Uh, my Instagram, at Annalise Sheree. My YouTube is also at Annalise Sheree. Um, and you can find me there, reach out to me. I'm super happy to help you kind of identify where there might be some misalignments and how we can really get you in your full operation where you know your thoughts, actions, and words are all aligning in a way that is really gonna bring you to where you wanna be, you know? Yeah. Even if you don't know where that is, I can help you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And having a different perspective so you can have a different projection. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's. We don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. So, if you're not liking what you see, like, take that accountability. Awesome. Yeah. Well, well said. Yeah. And thank you everybody for joining. Um, as as I like to say, clicking, subscribing, liking, thumbs up, something, some form of action. Especially if you sat here until the end, the least you could do was help. That means that I hope it, that you didn't, I mean, if you just left it play in the background, that's fine. But if you were actually listening to this, help other people find it because there's a reason that you stuck with it this far to listen. And so algorithms are real. Link and subscribe so we can be seen by more. Thank you Thanks, so much. guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi everybody, I'm Christina, founder of Liberate. This is our mascots, Miss Piggy and Mr. Chew. Liberate is like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory for spirituality. You might wonder what the heck that is. And so basically it Liberate is a place of sheer magic, activating and reigniting that magic into you so that you can live your fullest potential and most fulfilled life. When you walk through the door, you're gonna see magic everywhere you look. You look down and you see a crystal floor made with over 10,000 pounds of crystals. You say that's a lot, but I know I laid them and had to do numerous trips to the crystal store to buy more and more crystals. There's all of these beautiful, magical gemstones that are activating and creating healing from the beneath and the surface. You see the tree of life when you first walk in. You go upstairs and every room has its custom sacred geometry mural in it. And then you notice that each of the rooms are labeled with different uh, names of deities or archangels from different traditions and, and religions from all over the world. This is Liberate. Liberate is a space of union. Liberate is a space of creativity. Liberate is a space of expansion. And we're here to help heal you, transform, and help you rediscover yourself.